I want to start first, because uh, as people might know, tuning into the podcast, we released that flow film out that we did with you in Syracuse back in 2017. But like I said, there's a lot of Justin Knight content out of there. But I watched the Syracuse film recently to, to prep with the interview. And what jumped out to me, Justin, is just maybe how little has changed because you still have the same coach. Some of the people that were on your team then are either training partners or you, you still work out with to this yeah. day. Does it feel to you like very little's changed despite the fact that you've made world championship teams since then, you've represented your country on an international stage and you've gone pro? Yeah, I mean, I feel like not much has changed. Fortunate for me, I've kept the same coach. Um, a lot of those workouts are the same, but a lot faster, I guess you can say. Um, now, obviously, we're not in Syracuse anymore. I'm currently based out of Charlottesville. So I guess the workout venues and um, facilities have changed a little bit. But uh, at the end of the day, I see the the same teammates I would work out with uh, mostly at Syracuse. And uh, I get the same workout, so I can't complain. What do you miss most about college? Because you come across in that film as someone who really loves to be in college, <laughs> someone who really loves his, his <laughs> university. What do you miss about it? Um, you know, I find myself reminiscing a lot about Syracuse. Syracuse was a phenomenal school for me. Um, the overall school, that athletic department, the academic department have treated me with uh, so much love and respect. I think uh, what I miss the most is just kind of my, my teammates as a whole. Obviously, I have some of them here, but uh, we had some really good memories uh, back at Q's and obviously winning NCAAs as a team was one moment that stood out for me. Um, also, the one thing I miss a lot is I, I had a phenomenal training staff uh, at Syracuse as well. Uh, shout out to Brad Pike and uh, all the other trainers that I had over there. But um, it was just a great environment for me. I loved every minute of it. What do you wish you knew back then that is common knowledge to you now? Uh, what do I wish? I think, uh, you know, adjusting to the pro life. Um, I had a, a, a pretty rocky start, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> getting dead last at New Balance Grand Prix. But um, I just wish I, I could tell myself that, like, you have to keep working hard. Uh, you can't rely on others to hold you responsible for the tasks that you should be doing. And, um, you know, that's the sort of stuff that I'd like to follow through with if I could go back. Mm -hmm. In the in the film, you guys bring up you and a couple of your teammates just how Martin Hare was like the soul of that team and how it was tough. You know, once he graduated to replace that, I take it from that comment. It doesn't surprise you the success that he's had recently, where he's crushed the marathon and doing seemingly ten other things at once uh, in med school. <laughs> is that you knew that Martin back when you were in in Syracuse? I assume. Yeah, if there's any person that could live Martin's lifestyle. I guess it would only be Martin. He, um, <laughs> he's been a tremendous role model to me from the moment I stepped foot on campus. I remember uh, my first practice at Syracuse, uh, there was at least maybe six or five or six guys that were better than me just on based on the roster. And um, immediately I wasn't focused on like the fourth best guy or the third best guy. I was just focused on Marty. And I knew that at the end of my career, I wanted to be for the team what he was to me. And um, yeah, I just think like what he's doing in life is not easy. And I don't, I don't think there's many people that could actually achieve what he's achieving right now. And um, it's really an inspiration just to know him personally and see him accomplish all the stuff that he's done. Is there anything you've been able to pull from, from him or is he just completely a unique character that if you try to uh, replicate what he's doing, it's going to end up bad for, for everybody else. <laughs> well, I mean, when I was in college, there was a lot of stuff that I tried to replicate from him, just, uh, you know, attitude, mindset, um, the way he approaches workouts, the way he approaches races. Uh, I learned a lot of stuff from him and a, a lot of guys on the team, whether they're better than me or not. Um, I think even just seeing him now go through med school is just, uh, he's kind of showed me that things in life aren't perfect. Like sometimes, you know, you might have to get up at 5 a.m. to go do that workout. And I think for him to be able to do that and still be competitive, it shows me that um, you can still achieve your goals no matter the path that you choose to get there. So it might 
look like it's a little inconvenient, but if you work hard, you can still get the same result. Another video feature featuring you that we put on the site was the Peyton Jordan behind the scenes. And I was on that shoot, Lincoln and I did that, did that shoot. Yep. And so I have some firsthand knowledge of that. First of all, that Airbnb you guys had in Palo Alto was pretty nice. I'm, I'm just going to say yeah. that was a pretty good setup you had. Uh, and second, what stuck out to me from that shoot, and I was only there the first couple hours and then Jeremy bothered you with the camera all the way leading up to it, but just how calm you were. Uh, I know it's Peyton mm. Jordan, and for you, that had been routine by that point, and you're a pro, and it's not the peak of your season like maybe it would be for, for somebody else, but you were just like you are right now, completely even keeled. You didn't seem irritated if we, you know, you which went out and shot hoops <laughs> a couple yeah. hours before the race. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm assuming that's pretty, is, is that in line with, with, with Justin in every, in every pre-race, or were you putting on a, a show for us? <laughs> Well, let me say first and foremost, you uh, you guys caused me a lot of trouble with my friends putting up all those missed uh -oh. shots that I had. <laughs> so I, I've, I've had a, a couple arguments with my friends saying that, oh, they only post the shots that I missed. <laughs> but uh, That is true. If you watch no, the whole thing, you got hot. You got hot towards the end there. Yeah, yeah. I, I heated up towards the end. I think that rim was a little bit off too, but um, <laughs> I think definitely – it took me time to become that Justin. Uh, as I said, my freshman year, um, I was still, a, I would say an impressive freshman. Like I, I had a pretty easy uh, adjusting period to adjusting to being an NCAA athlete, but I used to be shaking on the line and even moments before the race. And I had great teammates like Martin, Colin, Joel Hubbard, um, Andrew Palmer, Joe Cush, guys like that, just to kind of teach me, you know, how to go about preparing for ACCs or Peyton Jordans mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And um, by the time it was my sophomore year, um, I kind of had that realization that the work is done. You know, you worked hard, you did everything that you had to do. And right now you can't be worrying about a moment that's not going to come until it's actually race time. So um, I'm a pretty calm guy. Even people ask me like, what type of music do you listen to? And you know, they're surprised that I'm not having like Meek Mill or like some super hyped up music. It's like some Justin Bieber or something in the background just to, to keep me really calm. But um, I try to save all my adrenaline for the race. Yeah, you mentioned that in the piece that you had to tone down the music because the music was getting you <laughs> too hyped. Yeah, uh, I think well, it was while, while we're on the top of. Yeah. Oh, is that the turning point? Yeah, I think Wisconsin, my freshman year, I, I had a wicked playlist set up. And I was so pumped up. But then by the time I got on the line, I just felt tired. I felt like I already ran the race. So from that moment on, I had to put like a much calmer playlist. Yeah. Speaking of music, also in that piece, you reveal something from your past that I don't think we gave. We zoomed in probably too much on the missed shots in basketball. And we did not pay attention <laughs> enough to what you mumbled to one of your teammates about staying up till 5 a.m. in a previous Peyton Jordan to download a new Drake album and your coach was not happy about that. Explain. Yeah. I, I think that was the close. That's the first time that coach Fox actually came really close to yelling at me, but um, it was a well anticipated album. I think, what was it? It was either what a time to be alive or like nothing, not nothing was it. I think it was what a time to be alive. And um, he's been like hinting that he was going to drop it for a while. And then like, I think, yeah, the night before, I just, like, stayed up really late, waiting for him to drop it at, like, 12, but it actually, like, dropped at, like, I don't know, like, 5 a.m. or something, and then I had to, like, go to, I had to go to the store, or sorry, this wasn't the mm -hmm. night before the race, this was two nights before the race, but I had to okay. go to the store, yeah, I had to go to the store, and one of my teammates drove me to the grocery store to get an iTunes card, because I didn't have, like, an Apple Music at that point, and then I got the car, downloaded it, listened to it before I went to sleep, and it, it hurt me in that race. It probably cost me the Olympic standard. <laughs> How did your coach find out? Oh, I told him. We, we have a good relationship. <laughs> I, I don't lie to Coach Fox about anything. <laughs> so he said in the debrief, hey, Justin, was the training too hard last week? What, did you have any injury issues? You're like, no. It was this Drake album. That's what it was. It was just Drake. <laughs> Blame him. Well, you 
it's funny enough. So it didn't happen in the order that you would think it happened. I told him before the race and before the race, he kind of blew it off. And I almost thought that he didn't hear me. But then after the race, he told me, he's like, I was so mad that I didn't want to freak you out before the race. But like, then he had a serious talk with me afterwards. He said, like, dude, you got to act like a pro. You can't be doing stuff like that. And uh, I understood it. I mean, it wasn't worth it. The album was amazing, but uh, it kind of cost me the Olympic bid, I think. <laughs> yeah, the music was good, Drake, but could you have waited? To, could you put it out at 9 p.m.? Could you could have done 9 p.m.? Do Justin a solid there. Well, I mean, in your defense, you're in college. You you make mistakes. Yeah. You don't necessarily. You, I thought it was one night before. I thought it was one night before. Not that two nights before, again, is that much better because it's still just an album, but I yeah. think you get, you get a I little bit of latitude off. there. Yeah, I thought I was doing some thinking after a while, and it was two nights before, but I basically pulled an all-nighter because I stayed up till four. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. you can call it whatever you want. 